Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Luminar AI and I was playing around with a photo and the photo is kind of dark and I was just making some adjustments using some different tools to fix the dark parts of the photo or to fix an entirely dark photo in this case. And I thought it might be helpful to share some of those tools because there are five tools that I frequently use to fix dark parts of a photo or fix an entirely dark photo. Let's hit it. Here's the image. This was shot in Berlin a number of years ago, back when we could go places like Berlin. God, beautiful city, beautiful country. I love Germany. Uh, so five tools. Some of them are pretty simple and straightforward. Some of them are a little bit more involved. We're going to jump into all of them. First one's in Enhance AI, just Accent AI. Everybody knows this. Everybody loves it. You drag it to the right, and your photo's brighter. The only thing I like to caution about this tool and I went to 100 on purpose just to kind of purposefully overdo it, but it really does, it kind of makes this photo specifically look a bit like an HDR because Accent AI, I think people think of it as a brightening tool and it does do that, but they actually say that it does up to like 12 different adjustments. So I think it's popping colors. It may be popping a little bit of like structure or detail. It's doing contrast. It's doing a lot of things. So I use it sparingly. If I have a really dark photo, you might be better off doing some other things first and then coming back and using Accent AI because at 100, I mean, it's not a bad looking photo, but it looks heavily processed. Let me just put it that way. So that's tool number one. But again, just be careful with it. Tool number two is a light. And there's a few different options here. There's three specific things we're gonna talk about in the light tool. The first one, of course, is exposure. Drag it to the right and the photo gets brighter. Um, Here's the thing, exposure, of course, is not an, it's not intelligent, it's just exposure. So you're brightening every pixel as you drag it to the right. I don't really want a whole lot of brightness in the sky, so using exposure, again, by itself, is probably not the best thing. You might want to brighten the exposure like that, which is going to pull up the entire photo, but then maybe you want to come back and pull down the highlights a little bit so that you don't start blowing out parts of the sky. That looks a little bit better to me. So exposure to me, kind of like... Uh, Accent AI on this photo is not something I would use alone. I would use exposure in combination with highlights and maybe even shadows. That's the next one we're going to talk about. So let me hit reset. Shadows can have a huge impact on a photo. Drag that to the right and that really brighten that thing up. But again, it's uh, for me, uh, I, I guess the best way to say it is I think shadow works in a photo. That's why I like contrast in a photo. I think it's real having some variance in light values I think is normal and relatable if you don't have any of that variance or in other words if you remove all the shadows and the light is perfectly evenly distributed it looks kind of like an HDR which is there's nothing wrong with that uh, but it does kind of look like an HDR and I think sometimes it doesn't look as real it's just a personal opinion feel free to disagree uh, now I'm at 100 you would not normally go to 100 but I just wanted to show you that shadows on a really dark image like this can have a huge impact. But once again, I would most likely do some combination of maybe a little bit bump in exposure, maybe a little bit reduction in highlights, maybe a little bit of a bump in shadows, and then maybe go up here and get some Accent AI just to give it a little bit more kick. And there you go. That's probably something more like what I would do on this particular image. In other words, I would use some of these tools in combination, which I really think is the message behind this video. You can get by with just using one tool. If I hit reset and I just show you shadows again, I mean, I, I brightened, I leveled out that uh, photo, those, um, you know, the dark parts, I brightened it significantly. So I've got visibility all the way through the frame, but I don't know, it seems a little overdone to me. So again, I would balance some of all of these tools together. That's just kind of what I'm saying. So First tool is Accent AI up here in Enhance AI. Second tool is light, but there's three parts of light that we're talking about. Exposure and shadows, we just did that. The third part is curves. Now, I'm not gonna dive deep into curves. I'm just gonna touch on it. I have a deep dive video. If you wanna check it out, it's right there. Super powerful, probably the most powerful tool in any product that has curves. It's not just in Luminar, it's in you know all major products. Super powerful, super amazing. But you know you can do a lot of different things to adjust the uh, dark parts of an image using the curves tool. I think personally, you got to be a little bit careful like that. That move right there, I'm, I'm brightening up some of those shadows. But when you lose shadow, you lose contrast because again, you're having flat light. And I think contrast is helpful. So just be careful. You might do something like that and get the light a little bit more balanced and then come back 
with smart contrast and then maybe pull down highlights, maybe pull up shadows a little bit and get a little bit more balanced image. I'm just kind of hacking, but um, curves can be used by itself. I think you got to have a really uh, a lot of practice with it because I mean, I've used it for years and I still I don't use it all the time simply because it's kind of harder for me to get it right um, versus using some combination of these other things like uh, some contrast, some highlights and some shadows and some accent AI. Those tools make it easier than curves. Having said that, I think curves is vitally important and I think it's a very powerful tool. And I think a working knowledge of it, you know, maybe not a practical every image kind of knowledge, deep experience. I don't think that's required, but it's helpful, I think, to get a little bit familiar with it just to see how it operates on an image. But having said all that, that's the third part of the light tool. So, uh, you know, exposure itself, shadows, and then curves, all three of those have a huge impact. And light is probably the one that's most important out of all of these because you have so much power in there because, of course, you have all these additional controls, temperature, smart contrast, things like that. Okay, so I've reset that. Tool number one was Enhance AI. Tool number two was the light tool. I'm going to pop down here to the third one, which is Super Contrast. And again, did a video about that if you want to check it out there. But um, as I said in that video and I've said in others, this is a season to taste kind of thing. And this is one that I think requires a bit of experimentation. If you just drag the sliders, you're just kind of adding contrast and you might be like, I don't really know if that looks very good, Jim. So if I turn it off, you know, a little bit brighter, maybe not that great. But if you use these balance sliders, they help quite a bit. So, you know, I recommend just experimenting a little bit and seeing what helps and what maybe doesn't help. And that's kind of what I'm doing as I'm talking to you here. So, you know, you're making, uh, not you, I'm making a little bit of progress with this uh, image using the uh, super contrast slider. It's so dark that the shadows contrast is coming in really handy. But if I did not uh, use shadows balance uh, so far to the negative, you can see I didn't have as much of an impact on the photo. So I think that's helping quite a bit. That actually looks really balanced. That's probably a bit like what it looked like there because there is some contrast and that sort of thing. So I think that tool is super powerful. And if you turn that off, there's the before and there's the after, not using any other tools, just super contrast. And I think the light is looking quite nice in that one. So that's tool number three. Okay, the fourth tool here is Dodge and Burn. I did a recent video about it. If you wanna check it out, um, I would be using the Lighten option here. So I'm on Lighten. You can adjust your brush, brush size and strength, and then all you do is you just paint it in across the photo. Now, I'm not gonna do a super good job here because I'm just recording this and I'm not trying to get it really accurate. I just wanted to show you the kind of impact you can have on a photo with Dodge and Burn. It does do frankly, wonderful things. Um, and again, I'm just kind of slapping it on here. I might reduce the strength a little bit and then come up here and hit the sky just to brighten that a little bit. You just want to be careful because there's a lot of really bright spots in the sky. And again, this is not a tool I would use by itself. As I also said in the dodge and burn video, it's a tool that for me is a end of the editing, final touch up to the light kind of thing. It's a you know, a light touch here or there. You might want to come in and brighten this tower and that tower on this church just to give a little bit better visibility. But the point is you have a lot of power and control with Dodge and Burn. You can go anywhere you want, mask it in, and get uh, you know adjustments to your light in order to fix dark parts of a photo or a dark photo. If it's an entirely dark photo like this one, I would not start with Dodge and Burn. I would start with a light tool. Uh, and maybe Accent AI, and then come back maybe Super Contrast, and then Dodge and Burn toward the end if I still had some smaller areas I wanted to target. And that's one of the things I think about with Dodge and Burn. For me, it's a targeting tool. It's not a global tool like Light or Accent AI or even Super Contrast. It's more of a targeting tool where I would come in and specifically target certain small areas and lighten them with this tool. So that's kind of how I approach it and use it. That's tool number four, Dodge and Burn. Okay, and the fifth tool that I use is local masking with a basic mask. And basically, not to use the word basic too many times, but it essentially is like having the light tool again, and then you can apply that selectively. So you have exposure here, just like you do in the light tool. And if you don't mask it in, it's a global adjustment. So same kind of thing. You can come in here and adjust shadows and highlights and exposure, and basically just manage the look of the photo without, and I'm just kind of messing around with it as I uh, kind of have a chat with you here, 
but you can basically come in and adjust the photo pretty well even without masking it in. Now, it probably needs some work. I'm just kind of hacking here, but the point is it's very powerful, and because it's designed as a local masking tool, it's, again, really something that I would normally use as kind of a touch-up or targeted tool, like um, if I hit reset, and let's say I'd done other things and I just wanted to come in and brighten that section of the photo around the church, I would probably come in and do something like that and maybe lift the shadows a little bit and then come in here with my brush and just paint it in. So I'm on paint mask. I might come over here and, you know, again, kind of a hack job, but I just wanted to show you how it works if you're not familiar with it. And I'm just going to hit a little bit of that part of the photo and you can see how it's brightened there. Now, Again, because it's designed as a local masking tool, I would normally use it after I've done other things. So again, I would start with Accent AI or the light tool primarily. I would do my basic lightning adjustments with the core tools on the Essentials tab uh, and the Pro tab that we already talked about. But as a touch-up edit, you could use Dodge and Burn, as I just mentioned, or a basic local mask in place of Dodge and Burn. So there's a lot of flexibility here. But again, if you did not want to mask it in at all, you could just hit reset and then come over here and use it as a global adjustment like that. And frankly, it does a good job because it's essentially the same thing. Uh, a lot of these tools are the same as what's in the light tool. So again, I'd probably pull the highlights down, maybe pull up the shadows a little bit, maybe add a little bit of structure, who knows? I'm just kind of playing. But using only the, the local masking tool, I took it from that dark of a photo to this photo, which has a lot better distribution of light, still has some contrast, still has some shadow, but it's a lot brighter so you can actually see into the image a whole lot better. That's tool number five, using a basic local mask. And those are the five tools that I use to go and brighten images, or as I said, specific targeted parts of an image in, in, in the cases where they're really dark, or you've done other edits and you've got just one area that you want a little bit better visibility in, I use targeted adjustments for that. But if I'm starting with a really dark image, light tool or Accent AI before I start doing more targeted things with some of the other tools, that's how I go about doing it, my friends. Hope it gives you some ideas. Hope it helps. Hope it uh, maybe inspires you to try some of these tools in your own edits. Thank you for watching. Thanks for hanging out. I hope you're doing well, taking care of yourself, all that kind of stuff. I'll see you in the next video. Have fun editing and adios.